because the taste of the cool girl matcha is not nice. It's grass clippings. A parking ticket I got three years ago for £280 is gonna stop me from renting a flat. Like, what? Satin, darling. <laughs> Baby girl, if I had 12 months rent to give you, would I not be putting that on a deposit on a house? <laughs> Hi, hello my little lovies. Welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're first time here. Wait, what? What was that? What's my intro again? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Emma Thompson Hill. Thanks for joining me today. Um, what? I can't remember my intro. Sorry. Brain fart. But hi, welcome back. We're vlogging again. We're vlogging. I've got all dressed up because I don't fancy sitting in the house all day in my pyjamas. I want to go outside. I need a new eyebrow pencil and I need to get some dry shampoo, basic shit. But I've been dying to go to Blank Street and try that blueberry matcha that everyone bangs on about. So I'm going to go to Blank Street. I'm going to see if it's worth the hype or if it's just everyone chatting shit. I'm not super into matcha, right? But if I get good matcha, like if I go to Tajuri... In Manchester, that is good matcha with coconut milk. I will like that, but I wouldn't drink it instead of coffee. But I'm intrigued about this blueberry matcha. I've been to Blank Street once and I got the, what was it? I think it was the uh, brown sugar cold brew. And I was just like, this is nothing special in the slightest. Didn't really rate it. And my man got a pistachio latte and it was super, super sweet. And I'm not super into sweet stuff. So I'm willing to give it another go. I'm willing to try the matcha since everyone bangs on about it. I also want to go get Vietnamese food. Mm, so I'm going to go to this place I've never been to in Chinatown. But I also want to sit at a restaurant or a cafe and just do a bit of work as well. So we'll see where the day takes us. It's 12 o'clock. I'm pissed about all morning. Well, I say I've pissed about, you know. I've been getting ready, doing stuff. I'm wearing this adorable cardigan. You know, in the last vlog, I was like, oh, I need to try on this boo. I need to try on these, these parcels and I never did it. I am actually going to do it for you today. They're all on the floor over there. I've yet to try them on. But I have tried on this jumper. So this is from a brand called Oms. O-M-N-E-S. Oms. 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 I don't know. But look at the cardigan. Isn't that flipping adorable? I'm not sure what size they go up to. It might be a 24 or a 3X or something. I'm not sure. So this is the fit, ASOS jeans, little cardi, my jewellery, and I'm wearing these shoes, I'm not I'm warm in ages. They are the purple Nike Sakai Vapor Waffles. So yeah, I'm eyeing up, oh, knock my bra out. I am eyeing up this pair of shoes on Vinted, because I've wanted these for a really long time, and I didn't get them. And in the shop they were £80, but then now when I went into a different shop the other day, they were like 100 and summer, and I was like, where's that come from? Anyway, they're these black and pink adidas speciales special it's such a funny little word that but I've, obviously i've got them blue ones that i wear all the time and i thought this is adorable it's black and pink it'll go with everything and i would love to wear them with this outfit right now but yeah guys i'm having a nightmare with the stuff with the house with the new house um i think i'll fill you in when we get home there's a lot to touch on and talk about yeah because i might not even be moving anymore <coughs> We need to discuss it later on because it's been stressing me out all fucking week. Anyway, let's get ourselves together and let's go on a little adventure in town. wine gums in so long but they slap all right let me stop eating them so i can talk to you i didn't actually end up getting food out well i did i went to so let me view for it i went to blank street and i got the little matcha drink and you know what it was really nice it was really nice but i feel like it's only really nice because it doesn't taste like matcha it tastes like blueberries i think the thing with um blank streets flavored drinks is that they are really synthetic like they're really you know, like how you think like a 
blueberry flavouring would taste rather than how an actual blueberry tastes. That's how it tastes. It's not bad, like it's really nice, but it's just a bit, I don't know, a bit synthetic. I enjoyed the drink nonetheless, but I feel like people bang on about it because it makes you look like you're walking around with like a matcha and I'm such a cool girl and I drink matcha, but it doesn't even taste like matcha. You know what I mean? It gives you the look of the cool girl matcha without having the taste of the cool girl matcha because the taste of the cool girl matcha is not nice. It's grass clippings in my taste bud opinion. Anyway, I did that. I did actually go to Boots. Oh, let me just go get my bag. So, I went there for brow pencil. My Refi one had run out and I really do like the Refi brow pencil, but they're about 20 pound and it's like, don't need to be spending that on the brow pencil. I've used this in the past, it's a Maybelline Express Brow. I think it was about eight pound. So I just got that. Hopefully I still like it as much as I used to. And I also went, and I, oh, I went for dry shampoo as well, but I forgot to get it. I'm gonna have to get that at Home Bargains or something. But I went for a salicylic acid toner. So obviously I've covered up my spots with my makeup today, but when I got my facial by Sammy yesterday, she told me to try something called skin cycling. So one day use glycolic acid as like a, um, a toner uh, along with my skincare routine. So glycolic acid one day, then salicylic acid the next day, then two days break. So I'm not like overrunning my skin with all these acids. So they will both help to brighten my skin and clear up the spots. So I got a salicylic fix tonic from Nip and Fab. I used to love Nip and Fab. If you remember when I first started YouTube, I used to love the glycolic pads. But then at a certain point, I just stopped using them or they stopped working for me. I don't know what it was, but I used to love them. And then I also saw this and I just fancied it. So it's a Real Techniques makeup brush. What is it? Seamless complexion. Let me get it out. So I've been seeing a lot of girls on TikTok recently like, um, put on their foundation with a brush. And I've always been a sponge girl, but I thought, I want to try a brush and see if it like really changes how your foundation looks and the coverage. This looks really nice actually. So it's like flat on that side and like that. So you can just, oh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like that. I'm gonna try it because I've also got, you know that foundation that went viral, the Laura Mercier one? I've been using this since last year and I didn't realize that it went so viral. It is beautiful, but I've seen everyone trying it with a brush. And I thought, if I try it with a brush, is it gonna be even better? So that's what I'm gonna do. I need to fill you in on what the hell's going on with the new flat. Um, but I'm gonna do that when I sit down, like, and have some food, because I need to cook food right now, because I'm hungry, because I didn't eat when I was out. Oh yeah, what did I do after Boots? Look at my scatty brain. I went from there and I went to Gales because I wanted to sit somewhere where I could do work because Blank Street is really small inside and it's so busy. So I went over to Gales and I got a chicken parmesan sandwich. Mm, my favorite. And I stayed there for a couple hours doing a bit of work and editing. And I was, I wanted to go to the Vietnamese place but I was like, I'm not hungry now. And I just didn't want to waste the food because I want to eat it when I'm really hungry and craving it. Um, so I just walked home. I just was in the mood for a walk as well. Especially because I've not been going to the gym like the past few days. I was like, let me just get in some kind of exercise. I'm really thinking at the moment about like trying to do stuff to regulate my hormones and just stuff that's good for inside and up here. So the walk did me good mentally. <laughs> so right now I'm hungry, so I'm gonna cook um, some dinner. It's only five o'clock, but oh my God, I need to tell you something that happened. So basically I received an email about an hour and a half ago I can't even believe I'm gonna say this. From a PR exec at Pretty Little Thing inviting me to come to Afro Nation with them in June. God willing, hopefully everything goes well, but I'm gonna be going to Afro Nation with Pretty Little Thing this year, which is so flipping exciting. It was only today that I was even looking at the Afro Nation lineup. Honestly, look at God, because I've had some stuff going on with the flat that I'm gonna tell you about. And then this came five minutes after that and I was like, wow. And it was literally only the other day that I was thinking like, there's so many brand trips going on right now and I feel like brand trips have really made a resurgence and there's a lot of brands doing them at the moment. And I never get invited on brand trips or even like little things in the UK. And I don't even really get invited to that many events. And I do think I'm kind of overlooked in that area and I'm not sure why. But the thing about me, I'm never gonna get down about oh, look at what these people are doing and I've not been invited and I'm not doing it. That will never be me. Like, I'm always going to be happy for other people getting their flowers and getting what they deserve, especially in this industry. I've said it all the time on this channel. I'm such a believer of what is meant for me will be for me and what isn't won't. And I try not to mess around with, like, fate and, you know, what is meant for me. So I was just thinking, you know, my time will come. And it came 
sooner than I expected. So I'm really excited. That is going to be so much fun. I actually don't know who's going yet. I mean, they don't have a full guest list yet, but I know it's going to be lit. So that has really brightened up my day and made my Friday. So I'm going to get into cooking some food right now and then we will discuss what's going on. For the day I die. I'ma touch the sky. Back when they thought pink polos are hurt the rock. Before Cam got the shit to pop, the doors are closed. I felt like bad boy street team. I couldn't work the locks. Now let's go. Take them back to the plan. Me and my mama hopped in that you all van. Any pessimists, I ain't talk to them. Plus, I ain't had no phone in my apartment. Let's take them back to the club. It's about an hour I stand online. I just wanted to dance. I went to take up an hour after I got my advance. I just wanted to shine. Jay's favorite line, dog, in due time. Now they look at me like, damn, dog, you what I am. A hip-hop legend. I think I died in an accident, because this must be heaven. Here is my final meal. It looks very weird, but it tastes good. I wish I put some peppers in it though, or like some veg, because it's just potatoes, chicken, and cheese. <laughs> but I'm happy. Guys, I've been thinking about this all day. It's meringue with vanilla ice cream, strawberries, and I just went to the shop and got a Galaxy Ripple. I'm like, why am I pointing at it? I got a Galaxy Ripple and I crumbled it on top. And I'm watching this documentary. What Jennifer did. It's like a Netflix true crime documentary type thing. I'm gonna do a little bit of editing. Oh, the sunset outside looks so nice. I need to show you. Let's go and look. Look at that. That's one thing that I like about here. The sunsets are beautiful. And I guess I will be seeing them for a lot longer. I will tell you that full story. My camera's just charging and I want to talk to you on my camera, not on my phone. Good morning, my babes. It's Saturday morning. I've just made a little egg on toast. We need to do a food shop today because I don't have any food left. <laughs> Usually a food shop will last me like two weeks, but this week, because I've actually been using everything, it's just lasted me about a week. So I'm going to go do a food shop. I really could do with going to... Um, the Trafford Centre because I need to go to Bath and Body Works and get some new hand soap but Trafford Centre on a Saturday sounds like hell but I could reward myself with the Boost Juice which is next door so I might do that I want to get ready like I want to do my makeup maybe film a bit of content just some stuff like that really I've not got anything planned for like tonight so I guess I'll just see where the world takes me last night I was watching somebody feed Phil because there's a new series and I'm just obsessed with it. I love it. I've just had a shower. I did this little curly updo. I don't know how I feel about it. I think I like it. I think I like it from the front. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it from the back. I don't know. I might need to redo it. I don't know. I think I'll actually have to curl all my hair and then do it. Because it's actually straight right now. And then I've just curled the end bits. But it doesn't matter. I don't really know what I'm getting ready for. Well, I'm getting ready so I can like film a bit of content. And just look cute and feel cute. I never really use this NARS pot concealer, but when I do, it's always for like blemishes and I do it under makeup just to cover the redness. So, I'm going to try my new foundation brush. Let me see how people use it. I don't know whether to put the foundation straight on the brush or... I might try that. Oh, okay. What I love about this foundation is it still looks very much like skin, but you're getting a bit of coverage. And it's a really good shade match for me. This is the colour 2N1 Cashew. I think I am a neutral girl. I don't really know. I think, yeah, I think I've got neutral skin tone. I can't really tell. It's a bit of a weird one because I can be really pale and then when I get a bit of a tan, I do go a bit more olivey. It's so glowy. Look how gorgeous that foundation is. Oh, it's just so glowy, but you are getting nice coverage. And it's definitely buildable. I'm going to do Huda down here. I am using this HMB Cosmetics Concealer under my eyes, but it's not really my colour. Like, it's a bit too yellowy. But it manages to, like, blend in quite nicely. 
disrupts the situation that we have good the good harmony coming in you know you're gonna have to pay the piper it might not be in a good way the bass is basing i really took my time with this some days i really just get in the zone and i like really want to take my time with the makeup because i can do a full face in 15 minutes no problem but sometimes i just want to actually enjoy the putting on makeup process and the funniest part is i'm not even going out anywhere tonight <sighs> so i'm just gonna look cute for nothing all right so let's talk about what the hell's going on with the flat obviously when i've come to tell all you guys that i'm moving before i've even started uploading like the moving vlogs on tiktok and like the house viewings and you know that the last video i uploaded with the house viewings i already had my new flat sorted so i didn't put any of that out until i was like yeah everything's in motion i know where i'm going you know because just for me like i want to know what the hell i'm doing with my life before i start posting about it online you know so to me, everything was in motion. I had no plans of anything backtracking or, you know, like I was moving. Basically, my lease is up on the 28th of April, but I'm going on holiday on the 26th. So I was like, okay, I want to move around the 22nd just so I can like get my stuff together, get moved, get comfortable and then go on holiday. So that has left me with, well, it'll be a week on Monday. Today is Saturday the 13th. It'll be a week on Monday, but... Yeah, so yesterday, Friday, should have been a week until I'm getting um, the keys for the new place. So last week we were finalising the referencing and stuff for the apartment. So I'd already put down my deposit on the flat. So I've not moved in a long time. And when I moved here, it wasn't like that. Because this building, like, it's all owned by the building. Um, there's no, like, private individual landlords. Like, the whole building is owned by the building. Or the company, you know, that owns the building. And when I moved here, it was brand new. So there was a lot of free apartments. So there was no, like, stress or um, urgency about, like, oh, you need to pay the deposit or else someone else might take the flat. But obviously now when I've gone out looking for flats, and it wasn't like this when I moved in Preston, obviously, because the demand is just not as high. When I was house viewing this time, it's like, if you find a place you like you need to put down a deposit on it, tell them you're having it, and then they're gonna make you put the first week of rent as the deposit on the flat, and then they take it off your first, first month's rent. So before you can even start the referencing process and that, you have to pay them that money so they take it off the market and then, you know, so that obviously no one else can put in an offer or take the flat. Cool, did that. And then early last week we started doing the referencing. So they had this whole online system for the referencing, when you're self-employed, it makes it 10 times harder because they want to see your books. They want to know your accounts. You have to have been trading in business for a good few years. If you haven't got, I don't know if it's one or two or three years of accounts, you have to have a guarantor. Like, you know, they, they make it difficult for self-employed people. And I understand they're just trying to cover their backs, but it's kind of annoying. I've obviously been trading in my business for a good long time. So I've got years of accounts i have to send my id i have to send like all sorts of stuff like three months of bank statements um and my last year's accounts along with like my tenancy agreement for here all sorts of stuff right so they have a lot of information on me now she comes back from the from the letting agency and was like you have failed our um referencing process which baffled me because I make more than enough money to afford that flat. I mean, this place is more expensive, 25% more expensive than the place I will be moving to. And if you look at my bank statements, you can see I've been paying that on time every single month on a direct debit, on a flipping standing order. So I was like, oh, I failed the referencing. I was like, why have I failed the referencing? And she's saying, oh, I can see you earn X amount of money. She said, I don't know where she's pulled this figure out of her ass. Like, I don't know. She said, oh, well, I can see you earn X amount of money. Whereas if she really looked at the document, she would see I earned double that. But anyway, even if I did an X amount of money, it was enough to, to rent the flat. But to rent a certain place, you have to make like, I don't know if it's 30 times or 20 times. Whatever the monthly rent is, you have to make 20 times that amount as your yearly income or 30 times that amount. It's different for different places. But anyway, so I was like, I was just confused because I, I earn enough money in the threshold. And so I was like, oh, like, no, you can see that I earn this, this amount of money. And then she starts on with like, well you have um some debt on your name and i was absolutely baffled because i don't have debt like i do not borrow money i don't have overdrafts i don't have a credit card i don't do any of these things like i 
pay for everything outright which is annoying because it can sort of give you bad credit because I have no credit history I don't borrow money like I don't have a credit card so sometimes I feel like and I might have to do this when it comes now to going to get a mortgage to buy a house I'm gonna have to have some sort of credit on my name so I'm gonna have to get a credit card and start pe using spending money on it and then paying it off so they can see that I regularly pay off money, you know? But it's just, I've always, if I don't have the money for it, I'm not gonna buy it. That's my thing in life. Like, I don't want to be in debt. I don't wanna owe any more money. If I don't have the money for it, I'm not gonna buy it. Simple as that. Uh, and I think like that's just a good way to live my life. And I think I'm very lucky that I've got parents that kind of taught me financial management. Is that the word? Like, they've just taught me how to look after my finances and you know, all of that stuff. So I never spend beyond my means or anything like that. Anyway, now, she said I've got some debt on my name, and I was like, what? She comes back and says, oh, you've got a £282, like, thing on your name. And I was like, well, what the hell is that? I now have to call up some government website to try and figure out what the hell this is. I was on the phone for them for, like, an hour and a half on hold, just waiting for someone to tell me what the hell it was. Anyway, I get all the information back. Turns out, this is a parking ticket, right? A parking ticket that I got three years ago. And I recall all of this happening, right? So my car here, when I lived here, it got bumped into the back of. Someone was, like, trying to get in a space and they scratched my car. Um, and they very kindly, like, left a note and all that stuff. So my car went to the garage to get fixed. Whilst my car was getting fixed, I got a hire car. Whilst I was in the hire car, I got a parking ticket. Um, which, obviously, I had no clue about because the car is not registered to my address. So... I mean, I must have got um, a, I must have got a letter. I must have, like, but I don't remember it. And that's my bad. Like, I should have dealt with it. But I didn't deal with it. So I've completely forgot about it. I've not had no letters since. Like, this happened three years ago. I've not had any, like, letters saying you owe us money. Nothing like that. So I was confused, you know. She's saying I've got this £280 debt. And I was like, oh... I was like, you know, I had no clue about that. I don't do regular credit checks, which now I will be doing. Anyway, so I was like, oh, I'll get that sorted. No worries. Like, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Like, you can see on my accounts that I make more than enough money to afford the rent. And you can see on my monthly bank statements that I pay my rent regularly. But for some reason, she just wasn't having it. She was like, because of this, because you failed. Like, the way she was speaking to me, guys, like, she was so rude. And it's like, I've experienced this quite a bit with um estate agents and i'm sure some estate agents watch me and i don't want you guys to feel bad i'm sure you are nice people i don't know if it's just the nature of the job i don't know if things come across different on email because like you know you can't gauge how someone is saying something but i felt as though she'd been really rude to me and it's just like you're not using your common sense so she's saying i've failed their preference uh, referencing process and that because of that i need to pay 12 months rent up front that's the only option we have 12 months rent up front <laughs> baby girl if i had 12 months rent to give you would i not be putting that on a deposit on a house like she was just making things really difficult because you can clearly see with your own eyes i've given you my my yearly accounts showing every ounce of money that comes in my account and like you know like and you can see my three months of bank statements i would even have i would even be willing to send more i'll give you six months bank statements so you can see the regular money coming in and the regular money going out for my rent but she just was not having it i was just trying to reason with her and she wasn't having it and she just kept repeating the same shit about paying 12 months and i said i'm not paying 12 months rent point blank period i'm not doing that and then she was like and and the way she was talking it was like she hadn't actually put it forward to the landlord so she's obviously just the middleman the estate agent that works with the landlord so i was like can you put this forward to the landlord and see what he thinks um because you know at this point it's just her making the decisions and it's like well he's the one that owns a house let him decide then she's like oh well we've put it forward to the landlord would you be willing to have a guarantor and it's like at this point you're taking the piss like 200 and <laughs> a parking ticket i got three years ago for 280 pound is going to stop me from renting a flat like what and i'm kind of telling you the story as well to just be aware for yourselves do credit checks on yourself and see what the hell's going on because i had no clue i even had this like some meaty fucking parking fine from three years ago is now stopping me from getting an apartment but i feel like it was also her being very awkward and it's like i understand if that's your referencing system and i understand that you have to do the referencing so that you can cover your own backs and make sure someone can pay their rent but let's be for real let's use our common sense you know i can pay the rent 
you're just being awkward for awkward sake and I'm not sure why. And it just started making me like concerned and worried and I'm like, does she want this money because there's something wrong with the flat? Like once she's got 12 months, she ain't gonna give it me back. I would have to stay there. Like, is there an ulterior motive here? You know, that's what I started thinking and it started making me a bit worried and anxious and paranoid. So I'm like, I shouldn't have to give you a guarantor. I am more than able to pay this rent. So at this point she was just pissing me off and like it kept going on and I was just like, you know what? And during this time, because it was all, all everything was up in the air, I emailed my building and I said, have you filled my flat? Have you found a tenant for my flat yet? Because if you haven't, I am like, I'm going to stay. And they was like, oh no, we haven't found a tenant for your flat. If you want to stay, you can stay. And I was like, because now I'm worrying, even if I don't rent this place, am I going to have this same problem going elsewhere? And I'm just like confused. So fair enough, it was my bad for getting the parking ticket. I don't know what else I could have done. I had no idea that it existed. And I feel like their referencing system was messed up because you can see, you can see that I can pay the rent. And that's really all I'm gonna say about it. Like I, I said to her, you know what? Like the way I've been treated, like I don't respect it at all. And it makes me worried about the kind of company I will be dealing with when it comes to renting with you. I feel like I've been disrespected by you. I'm gonna even let me find the email that I sent because she was just being it felt very rude I can't lie it did feel rude I sent her an email that read I've provided documents clearly indicating my income bank statements proving my current rent which is more expensive than this property has been paid monthly with no issues because of a car parking fine I had no knowledge of and being made to feel like some sort of criminal I was very excited about moving into this property but this process has made me concerned about the kind of company and the lack of service I will be dealing with during my tenancy I understand you have your referencing process and this needs to be done for your peace of mind on yours and the landlord's end when it comes to rental payments. I completely respect that. But in my case, I feel as though common sense has not been used as I clearly passed the income threshold and I have been left feeling offended and confused. <laughs> so she was making it impossible for me. It was either pay 12 months rent, which I'm not going to do, or have a guarantor. Um, so I was like, no, babe, I'm not doing any of them. I said, I withdraw my application. Um, please can I have my deposit back? And she's like, well, no, you're not having your deposit back. Well, she, that's not what she said. She said in a, in a more, you know, professional way. Let me find out what the hell she even said. As per the signed notification of letting attached, if you were to withdraw from the tenancy at any point or fail the reference and checks, the holding deposit, the holding deposit is non-refundable. So she's saying you ain't getting that 300 and I don't even know how much it was, three, three, nearly 350 pound I've lost um, because she was making it impossible for me. And it's like... It's like she's backed me into a corner to where I can't, like, you're not giving me any viable options. And then now when I withdraw, she's like, oh, well, I can't give you back because you're the one that withdrew. And it's like, because you left me literally no option. And I've got a week, like, until I need to move. And I don't see this being resolved, you know? So to, to make sure I have somewhere to fucking live, I'm just going to stay here. Like, the only other option was to go home. And I don't fancy doing that, even though it would fucking save me loads of money. I just don't want to do that right now. So yeah, and obviously I do feel a bit embarrassed because I came on the internet and was like, I'm moving. And now I'm like, mm, I'm not moving. Um, but I honestly had all the intentions of moving. I guess God had different plans for me because yeah. So that's the story guys. This process of like viewing a lot more flats and finding somewhere to live has been a lot more stressful than it was in the past. And I don't know what's changed in the past few years, but this was difficult. This was a difficult process of like renting in Manchester. I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but I just think service within the rental industry is dead. Like, people treat you with no respect. And it's not just her, like, other people that, like, I I've dealt with. And even, like, um, people that have shown me around flats and stuff, like, I just don't get good vibes from them at all. I think people are quite rude. I think they're entitled. I think, I, I, I don't know. And I'm sure there's a lot of time wasting within the industry, which could lead people to be kind of restless and just be like oh like everyone's just gonna waste my time but i was saying this to my dad recently right because he can't believe it when i say to him like about how service is dead i said service unless you're going to a really fancy hotel or restaurant service is dead people treat you like the shit on your shoe like even in my building that i live now like the service here has not been great the service here has not been great and it's like i am paying a lot of money to live here and you lot treat me as if i'm like literally a piece of shit on your shoe. And I just don't know why. And I don't know if it's just like a reflection of where we're at as a society and how we treat one another. But like, there's no grace lended to people. There's no understanding lended to people. There's no nuance, you know what I mean? 
And it's like, I think we're all turning into a very cold and very jaded society, which is worrying. Cause like, even though that girl's pissed me off with this letting agency, I can see kind of where she's coming from. Like she's just trying to do her job. I feel like the same grace is not afforded to me. Like, you know, I don't know. And by the way, let me step in here before anyone gets it twisted. I don't think that I'm some special person and I need to be treated so nice. I think we all need to treat each other better. I think we all kind of treat each other a, bit, a little bit like shit sometimes. But even when I was editing this, I'm just thinking now, a lot of people don't get paid enough to, to be nice to you. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's part of the problem as well, that people are on such minimum wages and such low money when the cost of living is so high that it's like, yeah, I am miserable. I am pissed off when I come to work. This is a deep subject that I'm going to give more thought to because it's quite interesting. So I just find it a little bit worrying. But yeah, I'm staying here for a while, but now it really is mission by a flipping house, you know? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of this. Like, I've, uh, I'm tired of this uh, rat race of letting in Manchester. And I know the p buying process will be even fucking worse. But once it's done, it's done. So yeah, I now need to try and get things in motion with a mortgage. Um, but luckily, my auntie's, this is a long one, my auntie's husband's son's girlfriend is a mortgage advisor. So I'm going to talk to her. What would you call that? Like a cousin-in-law? I don't know. So I'm going to speak to her, hopefully get things in motion. Because the only thing is, guys, like, I love living in a flat. Like, I love the high-rise living, city living, all that. But I will not buy a flat. Um, and someone commented in my last video, they were like, um, not everyone can afford to buy a house as their first property. Don't look down on people who, who buy flats because I said I wouldn't buy a flat. In Manchester, flats are more expensive than houses. Like, if you buy a flat as your first house, that's a flex, like, because it's expensive. Because for a flat in the city centre, you could get, like, a four-bed house out of town for that, you know? Like, you get more for your money buying a house. It doesn't sit right with me buying a property and then having to pay yearly expenses on top of that. So when you buy, like, a flat, I might have to pay every year two, three, maybe even four thousand pounds for like my car parking or like the upkeep of the grounds or the upkeep of the building. Once I've bought my house, I'm paying my mortgage and that is it. I'm not paying mortgage and all these other bills. Hell no. That just doesn't sit right with me. So I want to buy a house just for that reason only. If I didn't have to pay all the other stuff, I'd buy a flat. Because I love like living in a flat and I love, you know living up high and living in town and all that but realistically it makes more sense for me to buy a house um so i'm not looking down on anyone anyone that can even afford to buy a property is doing amazing so yeah so that's that girls the thing is i was actually getting quite excited to like do the new place up and like sell some furniture buy some new furniture you know and obviously that's not going to happen now i don't know if to just judge this place up a bit i'm definitely going to carry on decluttering this house there's so much clutter that I just want to get out. And like, if this is going to be my last six months or my last year here, I won't be here longer than a year. I hope, God willing, I won't be here longer than a year. But you know, if this is going to be my last 12 months here, might as well make the most of it. I definitely need to get on with decluttering and just making it feel a bit more livable and homely whilst I still have time here. So yeah, that's what's going on with the house. I'm disappointed. I know you guys are probably disappointed that we're not getting a moving series. But yeah, I just had to come and be real with you for a minute because it's been kind of stressful this week. But literally, five minutes after I got the email from her saying all this stuff and being like, you're not getting your deposit back, I got the email from the PR at Pretty Little Thing asking me to go out of her nation. So every cloud has its silver lining, guys. Because that absolutely made my day. And I'm trying not to be upset about it or, you know, get in my head about it. Like I said, everything for a reason. And I, the plan will come together just how it's supposed to come together. So that's the way I'm viewing it. I think I'm quite lucky that I am generally quite a positive person. I don't want to look at life on the downside. Like I want to be happy and look at it on the bright side. And I don't hold anger like towards people like it really is what it is. I've been enjoying this um, brown mascara. A bit different, but it's very cute. Face is done. I need some earrings. Big ones. My mum bought me these earrings for my 21st. I think they were for my 21st or were they for my 18th? Literally cannot remember. All the gems have disappeared from them. They used to have gems in. They're DKNY, right? 
they're silver as well and I can't remember if it was my 18th or my 21st aren't they so cute and I never wear silver but I might wear these today they remind me of my mommy I need some good basic gold hoops like this size definitely need to get some more earrings really just finish off a hair and makeup look for me jewelry is so important to me maybe one day i'll do a jewelry line because that would be so fitting that's cute right okay that's it i'm gonna do a bit of filming now and i'll check in with you later guys i'm finally getting around to trying on that boohoo parcel this is the first thing this is so cute, but I can see my knickers. Like, it's actually see-through. But maybe if I wore nude underwear, it would be fine. I love the style. Like, it's a stripe, but it's just very subtle. And it's actually long enough for me. You won't be able to tell. But it's actually really long. It's quite sweet, isn't it? I'm not sure, but I think I love it. I just need different underwear. This is for my holiday. So I'm going on holiday in about two weeks with my mum. We're going to Mallorca. It's going to be cute. So yeah, I don't know about this one. I want to like it, but I don't know if I do like it. I think it's the colours. I feel like it could give maybe with like a red lip or something, but I don't know. I like the top. I know I definitely like the top, but I'm just unsure on the skirt. Hmm. It could definitely be a cute outfit for summer though, for holidays. I love this so bad. And again, it's actually floor length on me. Like it actually fits. I was meant to flipping fit. I think I might have got this two sizes up because I wanted this really like big look. I didn't want it to be super tight on me at all. And I'm super happy because it fits exactly how I envisioned. Hella cute. And I love this V neckline with the super thin straps. Perfect. I love her. Okay. I like this. I love the print. The print is so cute. Mm. Open back situation. Perfect for holiday. I do love this. This would be a beautiful little dinner outfit and I love the back, how it's all open. It does feel kind of cheap, like it's a mesh overlay on top of some fabric, which kind of annoys me when they're not it's like sewn down, you know, like it's not sewn together because I feel like they like fly open, it just annoys me. But I do think it's very, very cute. Oh my God. My food just arrived as I finished filming. I got pho or pho, whatever you want to call it. The chicken salad from there. So chicken salad. The chicken salad, wow. You know, because I was trying to get Vietnamese food yesterday. And I got summer rolls with peanut sauce. It's about to be so crunchy and refreshing. I am excited. Mm. The coriander, wow. And the little peanut sauce. Some around. I got prawn ones. I'm gonna enjoy this. <gasps> the spider's outside my window. There's a fly caught in a spider's web and he's gonna eat it. Mad. Anyway, I'm about to enjoy this. Thanks, girlies. <laughs> <laughs> Morning darling, setting darling. It's Sunday morning. The marathon is on in Manchester today. I can't leave my house until a certain time because they're all running outside. <laughs> I'm gonna do some editing. I've got a few like TikToks reels that I need to edit. I just wanna get them bashed out because I've had like content that I needed to edit for a while now. Like, I've got some content that was from weeks ago. So I just wanna get it sorted, get it scheduled for next week. I've got some soup. This is kind of like my breakfast. Well, it's, it's 12 o'clock now, so I guess it's like a lunch. So I've got tomato soup, and I just went down to the shop and got some um, bread, and I buttered it. So I'm having soup and bread and butter. I just fancy that not one of my hairs in the soup. Right. There's not much things that are better than Lurpat on fresh bread. Why did I drink a full bottle of wine last night? I need to know what the motive was but went to my friend Hannah's we all just had a bit of like a girly night just chatting and playing games and drinking and we made well 
Rhea made chicken kebabs and it was lovely. They're all the girls that I'm going to Miami with, so we were sort of talking about Miami as well. We're all actually going out today to this little event. So that's going to start at like five, maybe six. Let's get some work done before then. I have not curled my hair like this for years. I went through a stage where I like loved wearing my hair like this, but I've not done it for ages. I just use a chopstick curler. Basically, I wanted to wash my hair and wear it wavy because I want to wear a cap, but then I ran out of time because I was <laughs> editing. But I did get all my work done, which I'm really happy about. So I just thought, let me just curl it. But now I don't know because it's gone like short and I want to wear a cap. Let me go and get a cap and see how it looks. I can't find a cap. I swore I had a little Von Dutch cap. Can't find it. Found this though. I don't know. I want to wear some kind of hat. I think I'm going to borrow a hat from my friend. I'm going to do my makeup quickly because... It's half four and I said I'd be ready for five. <laughs> of course I did. So I'm gonna film a little um, get ready of me on TikTok. So I'll come back to you when I'm glammed up. I'm ready. I've just put my hair like this because I'm going to my friend's house and she's bringing me a cap. So this is my outfit. I've got my camo cargos on, some trainers, little brown vest. Oh my God, it's happened to me again. Can you see this? The last time I wore this jacket, and oh my days, oh my days. Basically, I put this jacket on because I was going on date night with my man and I sprayed perfume on myself whilst I had it on. And can you see how it's transferred on my neck? I'm gonna have to go sort that out, be right back. I've got it off, thank God. I don't know why it does that. I don't know if it's because the flipping jacket's made out of plastic or God knows what. Little vest, my jacket was PLT. Just my jewelry, but I might change my earrings. I brought some different earrings in my bag. That's the vibe. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm starting to flag like I'm feeling sleepy so i need to get like a shot in me or something and then i will feel better it's not gonna be too crazy because the party is like seven till eleven so i'll be home in decent time which i'm happy about so then hopefully i can be fresh tomorrow but i'm about to go to my friends now we're gonna do pre-drinks there and then i'll try and film what i can Like throughout that whole video I've been sat in my office and there's been no switch up of environment and I know it hurt my eyes a bit so I'm in the kitchen now to end the video. Look at this new hoodie I've got. So I've got some active wear from Second Left and I also got some stuff from a brand called Hina. They're both like Australian New Zealand brands and they do really nice active wear. I actually filmed a little try on for YouTube and TikTok so that'll go up probably in the next week over there but I'm obsessed with this hoodie. It's so cute and I've got new leggings on as well. I think the leggings are second left as well. Second left goes up to 4X, Hina goes up to 8X. Amazing brands. I think it is Hina or Heine. I'm not sure, it's H-I-N-E. But I tried to look up the pronunciation. But they go up to 8XL and their branding, their marketing is so beautiful, like so inclusive. I absolutely love it. Anyway, I never told you I did go to Bath & Body Works the other day and they had some new smells in there. I try not to go over the top in there because I don't need any body stuff, you know? All I needed was my soap. So I got Fiji White Sands and pa Paolo Santo and Sage. I love it. There wasn't a deal on, sometimes there's a deal on hand soap. These are 10 pound each. 10 pound for hand soap, Ugh, but I don't know. It smells so nice, it leaves your hands smelling so nice. And I just like the foaminess. It's like a, a sensation texture thing for me. Yeah, this just smells clean and beautiful and I love the packaging. So they've got this homeware range at the moment where the packaging is like really nice. Fiji White Sands is kind of giving tropical coconutty vibes. 
Yep. Yep! Oh, it smells like pineapple. I love that. And then I bought a little hand gel in the stars. If you know me, you know in the stars is my favourite Bath & Body Works smell. But I just wanted to get some like different hand soaps, um, scents that I've never tried, because they're a bit more homey them scents, whereas this one I like to smell on me. Okay, that's the video. I'm gonna do some video planning now. Hopefully I'm gonna get another video out on Sunday for you and we can get back to the normal schedule. But I'm gonna plan some videos now to shoot this weekend. Very, very rude of my camera to die just as I was saying goodbye. But thank you for watching. I'll see you soon with a new one. Love you all so much.